again, you talk about a big brand name game. This one, of course, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on, excuse me, no, I think it's 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, it should be on ESPN. It's LSU at Florida. Florida, a two-and-a-half point favorite. The total sits at 51-and-a-half. Of course, latest numbers at BetUS. Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. The swamp, if you will. Look, Gainesville should be absolutely rocking for this one. Uh, LSU has done some pretty crazy things against Florida here recently. They won last year 49 to 42 in Baton Rouge in what was the uh the game that yeah, actually Ed Orgeron was fired immediately following even though they won the game. Uh the, the over is 4-0 in the last four in this one. The underdog is 6-0 against the spread, so LSU of course playing that role here. Uh LSU 1 and 4 against the spread their last five on the road. Florida 3 and 10 against the spread in their last 13 overall. This is a storyline game. Uh, how bitter is Billy Napier that LSU would not even interview him? That's, I'm very curious, and, and will that, of course, spill over to the players? It likely doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Neither team has been great. They're both 4-2. and two. The offenses are meh. The defenses are okay. Uh, Florida's defense may be the lesser of the two. Uh, Florida 2-7 two and seven straight up, 3-5-1 and one against the spread in the last eight against LSU. I mean, the Tigers have done uh, just... Not whatever they want, but they have found a way to come out on top much more often than not. The quarterback, Richardson, has shirt, uh, certainly shown moments, uh, but he, you know, the whole offense is inconsistent. Uh, they're number 32 PPA per drive, but they're number uh, 80 in success rate. The defense cannot stop the run. They're number 100 in PPA per rush allowed. And then on the other side, LSU's left tackle, Will Campbell, still having health issues. Uh, LSU's offense, not exactly consistent. They're not built to come from behind, as you saw against Tennessee last week. They can't seem to get the wide receivers going. They're number 92 in PPA per pass. Uh, Kyle, I'm going to start with you here. Uh, LSU is number six in PPA per rush, which certainly – uh, doesn't bode well for Florida's defense. Uh, how are you breaking this game down? I still think the LSU's best rushing play, though, is just Jaden Daniels scrambling on some busted play. I mean, you know, Jaden Daniels is still not a very good passer. He is very good when he's out in open field and trying to make guys miss. I, I said it last week, I really don't like teams that their best offense is a broken play. Uh, you know, against a good team, you would think that that doesn't work very well. Now, defensively, I don't know that I would call Florida very good, so uh, especially against the run. So it's a bit hard to say what will happen there. I think there is, what are we, week seven here? It's hard to say that we're in week seven, and I really still don't know who either of these teams are. I don't think they're very good, but, you know, I, I know that they're not a great team, but I, I don't know that uh, we know – who has the higher ceiling of these two teams? We haven't seen hey, the upside. Let me, let me interrupt you. I would venture to say that these two teams don't actually yeah, know who they are at this point. point. That's a fair point. I think that's part of the problem, right? So, yeah, uh, yeah. It, you know, they don't even have, really have an identity. I think that makes it hard to bet on teams like this or even against a, a team because, you know, I don't know what I'm going to get from these two. Now, Florida is plus 1.58 in yards per play margin, uh, which is 21st in the country. LSU is 54th in the country. Um, Kayshawn Boutte has really been disappointing compared to what his expectations were uh, coming into the season. You could say that some of that is because Daniels is not a very consistent passer. I think that's probably some of it. Uh, Daniels has one turnover-worthy play, but only three big-time throws. So like we talked about last week, just not taking any of those chances. Um, maybe he scrambles too soon. I, I don't know. But uh, the offensive line hasn't been great in front of him either. Can LSU line up and run it consistently? Because Florida is 111th in success rate allowed. And I want Parker to look at this one because Florida's offense EPA per play when passing. I, I want to make sure that I have the right number here but it, because it looks really bad. But Florida's offense when passing is about as bad as anybody in the country. Anthony Richardson and the Florida run game, very dependent on running. Uh, the passing attack has been terrible. Uh, Brian Kelly, 34, 16, and 2 ATS in his last 52 as an underdog. Uh, does that matter in this game? I don't know. Those were at, at Notre Dame. The Swamp should be fired up in this one. Really good home field advantage. I really don't know what to do with this one. I guess I'll lean Florida, but not a strong feeling from me. 
Yeah, Noob just jumped into uh, the chat. He said LSU starting offensive guard Garrett Dillinger likely out for two weeks as well uh, to go along with Campbell, and he's he's right. I completely forgot to put that in the notes. Uh, so you've got some offensive line issues for LSU. Uh, but, Kyle, I mean, exactly what you're talking about, that Florida passing game, it did have that one spark against Tennessee where they were coming from behind, and somehow Anthony Richardson was able to find – enough open plays and was able to run around in the backfield, et cetera. And I think he threw for what, 400 something yards in that ball game. I mean, just the, the total in that game was more than the three previous combined games, just nuts. So Parker uh, moving over to you, uh, I look at the, I want to take LSU because I, I look at the, the run differential there uh, between LSU's running offense, but I don't know that it's a pure running offense. I, I think it's more just Jaden Daniels scrambling and I wonder if Florida's athleticism is going to allow that to happen. What are you seeing in this one? I think that's a that's a great point um, because there is entirely something different with Florida having like the run fit issues that they've had in the past and kind of that, hey, we can't really like if you run counter on us, we just can't tackle you, which was kind of the issue last year. Um, and, and it definitely is a little bit different to, to exploit those when. Florida has the opportunity to create some havoc in the in that run game and maybe contain Jaden Daniels in a, in a different way than they would um, just in a straight up designed run play. Um, and so I have I have Florida's uh, pass defense at 49th, their rush defense at 118th. We know what that means. Um, their rush defense is probably uh, getting picked on a little bit. And LSU is 24th in EPA per rush, only 65th in EPA per pass. But big difference is. Um, LSU's actually been pretty okay on early downs, 32nd in early downs EPA compared to Florida's 88th uh, early downs EPA allowed. So LSU should be able to, you know, in kind of neutral football open script, not accounting for context of the guards being out or the situational spot of going to uh, go into the swamp for for sure, um, should be able to move the ball a little bit better on early downs than Florida does. Um, yeah, as for the Florida uh, offense, Kyle, I have them at 76th in EPA per pass, but I do limit the damage that an interception can do. I think I've talked about this before on the show, but like if somebody returns an interception for the touchdown, that's not necessarily reflective of like passing ability and quarterback play. And so I, I put a cap on that and average that out to the median of the interception. So Anthony Richardson with, you know, five touchdowns and seven interceptions this season, I think um, if you include all of those uh, to their full value would definitely be one of the worst kind of EPA per play quarterbacks. But um, on, on average, I have them about 76. They're eighth in EPA per rush and they're rushing 6.1% uh, more than the average team. That's 104th in the nation. So high volume rushing against an LSU defense that hasn't really gotten pushed around in the run game, 32nd in EPA per rush and uh, 59th in, in rushing success rate allowed. So that'll be interesting to see. Neither, both teams are, are pretty bad in starting field position. So I wonder what kind of breaks and if a special teams play doesn't end up making the difference here just because both of them have not really gotten advantages in special teams play overall. Um, I would be inclined to go with Florida State at home. My numbers just without, again, without any context, without injuries or um, – kind of the the spot of Billy Napier and the quote unquote revenge game would slightly favor LSU, mostly based on the fact that they're passing pretty decently um, when, you know, when, when Jaden Daniels can, can uh, scramble and kind of create openness, but uh, there's an inherent ceiling on this LSU offense. So I don't know that I trust them or Florida. Uh, Jaden Daniels has an average depth of target of like 7.1. They, they can't get the ball downfield to save their lives. So um, there, there's too much variance for me to think that there's a smart play in this game um, just because there's so much nonsense in a rivalry game like this. And because both offenses really have been, you know, diametrically opposite week to week, depending on kind of how they prepare and whether they're feeling good or what they had for breakfast on Saturday morning. So I don't have a strong lean in this game. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Like I, I, I want to lean LSU, which by the way, uh, Bob in the chat called me out on it. I missed uh, Brian Kelly said this morning on the SEC coaches teleconference that left tackle will Campbell got out of the hospital on Monday, practiced with the team on Tuesday. He is good to go. He's going to play this weekend. So now Dellinger is still out, but uh, but you do get Campbell back. So that's mm -hmm. a good thing, I guess. But th there's still so much up in the air with these two teams that I don't know that there is a clear advantage as far as that number is concerned. So, uh, so no official play from us on that one.